Okay, so hear me out. Sooth 2's main feature is that it can detect resonant frequencies and automatically attenuate them. Virtual Riot's method from yesterday's video is great and very useful, but it's basically just another form of dynamic EQ or multiband compression. It doesn't actually track the frequencies themselves, it simply does gain reduction once a certain frequency range goes loud. So, what I'm wondering is, is there any way that we can use native DAW plugins to detect resonant frequencies and use that detection to automate any plugin? Well, I figured it out yesterday evening in Bitwig. It's funny, I was dealing with a mix with harsh resonances, and so I decided to use my Soothe 2 free trial. Then I thought, why not try cloning it in Bitwig? And I actually had some good success with it and was eventually gonna make a video about it. But then just hours later, VR posts his Soothe clone video. So I rushed to finish up this video for you all. So that was a nice little coincidence. I haven't perfected my patches yet, but I have some proof of concepts and some really cool racks that I'll have linked in this video's description for you to try out. So first I'm going to do a quick demo for a minute or two, and after that if you want you can just download the presets and leave. But in the second portion I'm also going to walk you through exactly how I made it so that you can do this yourself and make even better versions than mine if you want to, or you can just use mine. Also, please, smart people out there, leave comments if you know any better ways to do any of the things I show, or if you know how to achieve this in other DAWs, because I want there to be more free stock plugin setups. So, here's this rack. I call it Soother, not to be confused with Soothe. Please don't sue me. It's just like Soothe, except it only detects and attenuates up to eight resonances. You could build your own rack to do more resonances if you want, but with eight, it's already pretty CPU intensive. And by the way, I'm not claiming this is better or even as good as Soothe. Soothe is obviously incredible and really fine-tuned and sounds particularly good on anything. So first off, when you load up my patch, you'll want to open up the pre-effects chain because I added a pretty cool feature which mimics Soothe's uh, EQ style interface where the higher you boost a frequency, the more that band is affected by any resonance reduction. I'll show you how I did that later, and also I'll add chapter markers to this video so you can just skip ahead if you want to know right now how I did that. That EQ type of interface is really cool and probably has all kinds of other uses in Bitwig. So on the left, on the remote controls, we'll want to have the depth set above zero, because at zero the whole plugin will do absolutely nothing to the sound. Depth, just like in Soothe 2, is like a mix knob for more or less gain reduction when resonances are detected. Not even any phase shift or anything else happens at zero depth. And that's a cool thing about this rack, is that the whole thing is set up to simply automate 8 EQ notches, so when they're inactive the sound is totally unaltered. Then next we'll reduce the threshold until we can hear it picking up on the resonances we want to attenuate. We can adjust the attack and release of the gain reduction, which can make the attenuation of all eight bands start and end faster or shorter. Fast is more accurate, but possibly more distorty. Slower is smoother, but can be pumpier, depending on the material. The speed knob is pretty important. It determines how fast each of the eight bands will follow the resonant frequencies around if they change pitch. A very low speed will not closely follow the current resonant frequencies, but high values will distort pretty bad, like this. I'd put it up as high as you can so it tracks the right resonance, but back off when you hear it distorting. Then we have sharpness, it's similar to the sharpness knob in Soothe, it's the Q value for each EQ notch. Okay, so now the fun part. Now that we have it tracking and attenuating some of the resonances, let's focus in on the right frequencies using the Soothe style EQ control. Okay, now if you have Bitwig and want to try this rack, I have a Google Drive link in the description. Go crazy. Now let's move on to a walkthrough of how it works and how you can make your own similar rack really easily. So the core of it is that it uses Bitwig's native Tree Monster device to detect the loudest frequency at a given time that lives within the frequency range between the red and the blue, and then there's a little magic happening in the grid to map that frequency perfectly onto an EQ notch that makes it quieter. If we play our sound into a tree monster, 
the source sound is replaced by a loud ringing sine wave that moves around as the resonant frequency changes. There's the speed knob, which is the same parameter I put on my preset's remote control panel. It makes it jitter faster or slower with the resonance. We need to turn this sine wave ringing into some form of modulator to put on an EQ's cutoff. Let's load a new effects grid. There's a module called Zero Crossings, and it takes the incoming signal and it outputs a pitch value. If I load up a value readout module and put it into Hertz mode, you can see that it's showing our tree monster's resonant frequency. Let's add a modulator out block, which we can use to modulate the EQ. To be able to apply the modulator to the EQ, we need to first put it in the FX grid's pre or post effects chain. For reasons I'll show in a moment, let's put it in the post chain. Now we can make an EQ point and apply the modulator to its cutoff, modulating it to the max amount. Now the EQ notch is moving with the tree monster's pitch tracking. It's not perfectly aligned yet, but let's manually tweak the starting cutoff until it cancels out the tree monster's ringing. Two hundred sixty-four hertz seems about right. Now we have half the problem solved. The second half is making it only attenuate when the resonance gets loud. For this, let's add another modulator out. We can't use the raw input as the modulation value because that would move too fast. So let's add an envelope follower module to get the average of the level over time. Now let's apply this modulator to the band's gain parameter so it dynamically ducks the level. One last thing we can add is a knob that can change the intensity of the gain reduction. Let's add an attenuate knob after the envelope follower. This lets us do a little or a lot of gain reduction on the band. Okay, now our grid module is done, and we just need to get rid of that ringing sound. The tree monster's ringing is getting outputted from the grid, and it goes into our dynamic EQ, but we instead want it to be the input signal going into the EQ. So to fix this, we can use an audio receiver device right before the EQ, this device can grab a signal from pretty much anywhere in Bitwig. We want the signal from right before the tree monster turned it into ringing, but when you go into the menu, it doesn't show a signal before the tree monster. So to get around that, we can just add a tool device, which is like a utility in Ableton. It's not going to do anything to the sound, but now we can get the signal from the tool's output. Great, now we have tree monster's pitch detection being applied to the original sound, so we've basically created a one-band soothe. From here, it's really up to you how you want to use this basic setup to create some really useful devices. For the sake of demonstration, let's make a rack that does three of these dynamic resonance reductions all at once. To do this, we'll need to run one of these racks into the next, into the next. Before we duplicate the rack two times, let's set up a few quick macros on the first one. Let's make macros for depth, which is that attenuate knob, and macros for the rise and fall of the envelope follower. I'm going to duplicate the effects grid, so let's tuck this tool and tree monster into the pre-effects bin so it comes with. Then let's make three more macros, one for the Q, and one for the tree monster's speed, as well as threshold. Good, it's all how I want it, so let's duplicate it into the post-effects chain. And let's also adjust the tree monster's frequency range. We'll make it so each band takes up a third of the spectrum. Then duplicate it again into the second grid's post effects chain and adjust the third band. Now we have three frequency ranges and each one is automatically detecting and attenuating resonances when and where they appear. And the macros up at the top affect all three chains the exact same because by default Bitwig copies any modulations over when you copy and paste like this. So I made essentially the same patch in my first version of my Soother preset, except in that version it goes 8 bands deep. Here it is, and here it has some extra features, like that same kind of Soothe EQ style control. It'll all be linked for download too. This ugly nesting pattern is probably the quickest way to get to 8 bands of this effect, because for the most part Bitwig sort of works top down, where modulators can only be applied to groups downward for the most part. A parent with a modulator can modulate a child's parameter, 
but a child knob cannot modulate a parent's parameter. But a nice guy on the Bitwig Discord reminded me that there's a hack where you can apply a modulator onto a DC offset device, which essentially transfers the modulator signal to audio. And then you can use an audio rate modulator to grab that DC offsets value and convert it back to a modulator that can then be applied to parameters. So shout out to the helpful Discord guy. That's all maybe confusing, but I think you can somewhat easily inspect what I did in my preset. I used that trick in my version 2 preset, which I like so much better than the first version. I put all the tree monster resonance detectors into an effects layer, but then I muted it because we don't want the ringing. We just want to create these modulators that become DC offset devices. Then over on this EQ's modulators tab, I have all these audio rate modulators and each row is all eight of the resonances frequency and gain modulators respectively. Then it's just a matter of doing a bit of tedious picking of sidechain inputs from the right DC offset sources from the detector layer stack and a bit more tedious applying of all the modulators onto the EQ. And there we have it. It's a nice compact eight band soothe clone. This setup is nice because you can see all the gain reductions in one place instead of needing to dig through all the nested groups like you did in my version one. So then the last thing I'll show is the device I made that's turning the EQ curve in the pre-effects chain into eight separate modulators to apply the soothe effect to each band accordingly. I actually pulled it out into its own preset because I wanna make other similar devices with this kind of EQ curve that applies modulation to each band according to the EQ's frequency response. I called it the 8-band spectral modulator. It's a grid patch that takes some noise and splits it up into 8 even bands, each one going up in an octave. Any effects you want to modulate should go into the post effects chain. The pre effects chain is just for generating the modulations. I have some brown noise playing in this utils chain, as well as two little devices that just serve to make sure the dry signal skips over the grid patch using an audio receiver, just like how I showed before. Inside the patch, the noise signal is split up into these octave bands. These exactly match the band split values of the tree monster in my soother presets. There's an envelope follower for each to make each band of noise jitter a little less, and this mod skill knob adjusts the overall loudness of each band before it goes into the modulator out. So I think it should make enough sense to you that since the pre-effects signal is just noise, as I change the EQ in the pre-effects chain, the value of these modulators will each go up and down to match approximately the level shown in the EQ. If I high pass the EQ, modulator 1 will go to 0, and vice versa with modulator 8. Now we can load up an 8 band effect into the post effect slot and assign each of these 8 modulators to some parameters on each band. I'm not going to do it right now, but if we look back at my soother version 2, you can see that I decided to assign the modulators to the tree monster's threshold knob, meaning that the higher you push a frequency with the EQ, the lower its corresponding tree monster threshold will go, causing more gain reduction to be applied to that band. Anyway, that's a lot and I think I shared most of what I wanted to. Actually two more things. For the Fruity Loops folk, quick shout out to Frank Pohl for making his Smooth 2 patcher preset a few years back. He made it free and it's a great alternative to Soothe. I used to use it a lot when I mainly used FL. And similarly, his Track Spacer clone has a sidechain mode that works really well. And lastly, if you made it this far, please like the pinned comment, which is a petition for Virtual Riot to download Bitwig. He must download Bitwig. That's it. Links in the description. Let me know any and all of your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.